Hello again and welcome to another episode of What's New at the Attorney General's Office. I'm Tim Borman, South Dakota Attorney General Chief of Staff. And as you can tell by the window behind me, it's dark outside. That's right, it's Monday night and I'm finally getting around to recording Tuesday's episode of What's New. Now, I tried to work on this earlier today, but every time I start working on an idea, working together some things to talk about or trying to figure out who I could get in front of the camera to talk to you, the cell phone would ring. I'd look at the caller ID and it would be from somewhere in South Dakota or maybe somewhere in another state, usually a small town, maybe a town I've heard of, maybe not. But I'd answer the phone and it would be someone who was offering to extend my vehicle's warranty or lower my credit card interest rate or help me pursue a home equity loan. Robocalls and scabbers taking up a portion of my day when I was trying to get something else done. If it's happening to me, it's happening to you. It happens to all of us. Robocalls and scammers chew up so much time and so much energy and so many phone calls, it's absolutely ridiculous. Some of the last estimates that came out in 2018, they are pretty sure that the number of robocalls and scam calls made worldwide increased by 36%. They estimate that the number of robocalls made around the world was 26 billion calls. Now stop and think about that. If every single one of those calls resulted in 30 seconds of wasted time, that is 13 billion minutes with a B. Did that sink in? Okay, try this. 216,666,666 hours. That is 9,027,777 days of wasted time around the world used up by scammers and robocallers. Now, believe it or not, the federal government is working on this. South Dakota Senator John Thune and Massachusetts Senator Ed Markey together introduced S-151, the Telephone Robocall Abuse Criminal Enforcement and Deterrence Act, or TRACED. This act is aimed to mitigate and get rid of robocalls and scam calls nationwide, or at least make the penalty severe enough that people will stop making these calls. Back in March of this year, all 50 of the Attorney Generals of all 50 states signed a letter of support for the Trace Act. They were joined by the Attorney Generals from the District of Columbia and the territories of Guam, Samoa, the Mariana Islands, and Puerto Rico. All of the Attorney Generals, regardless of party, standing shoulder to shoulder saying, this is a problem for all of our citizens and we have to act to do something about it. At the same time, over a dozen senators have joined on to co-sponsor this bill as it works its way through the Senate committees where it's being marked up even as we speak. And hopefully we'll see it pass through the Senate, through the House of Representatives, wind up on the President's desk where it will be signed into law to give all of us a little bit of peace and quiet and peace of mind when it comes to hearing our cell phone ring. Now what exactly will the Trace to Act do? There's a lot of different aspects to it. Probably the one with the most teeth is that it will allow the FCC to levy a civil penalty of $10,000 per call against the persons who are making those calls. And to make sure that they have time to find those people, it sets a window of time for three years from the date that the call was made. They will have three years to file that civil penalty to go after the caller. Also, the FCC is going to be making use of some new technology. It's called Shake and Stir. Now, Shake and Stir is actually an acronym. Shaken is short for Signature-Based Handling of Asserted Information Using Tokens. Stir stands for Secure Telephone Identity Revisited Standards. Now, these two standards together are really technical, so we're going to take this down to a nuts and bolts bottom and description, the best way that I can understand it. What it does is when a person picks up their phone to make a call, it assigns a digital ID, a signature, to that call saying, this is the person, 
This is where they are calling from. This is the number of the phone they are calling on. That signature will accompany that phone call around the world on every single carrier that that signal crosses, whether it's wireless or wired. That signal then, with the signature attached to it, will come to the person receiving the call. And it won't tell you that that person's in Langford, South Dakota or Langford, Illinois, trying to sell you an extended warranty on your car. It's going to figure out that they are using a hijacked phone number and it's going to put a stop to the call. Now at the same time that this technology is taking place to ensure that the calls are coming from the person who says they're making them, it also makes sure the door stays open so that when your mom, when your grandma, when your kids give you a call, they're going to get through and you're going to know that it's them. The TRACE Act also is going to allow the Department of Justice, the FCC, the Federal Trade Commission, the Department of Commerce, the Department of State, the Department of Homeland Security, and the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau, along with the Attorneys General from all 50 states and other non-federal entities, to identify and report to Congress on a regular basis about the best ways that they can think of to improve the deterrence of robocalls, the scam calls that are coming through, and how best to prosecute the individuals who are responsible for these calls at both the federal and the state level. Basically, it's going to give some teeth to the law to keep the people from making these calls. Another aspect of the TRACE Act is that it's going to direct the FCC to initiate even further rulemaking so that it won't cover just the calls that you pick up and answer, but also text messages that can come through from these robocalls and these scammers. Now, obviously, this is something that we're going to be watching closely. As I said, Attorney General Roundsburg, along with every other attorney general in the nation, has signed on to let the Senate know that they support the TRACE Act. There have also been letters of support written from some of the major consumer groups in the United States, including Consumer Reports, the National Consumer Law Center, the Consumer Federation of America, and Consumer Action, four pretty power powerful consumer groups that are all willing to stand up and say, we've had enough of these calls. We'll be watching the bill, you be watching the bill, you be watching your phones. Now, even before the Trace Act, gets through. If you are getting harassed by these calls, if you're getting a lot of them, don't be afraid to place a call or drop an email to our Consumer Protection Division here at the South Dakota Attorney General's Office. If there's anything that our people can do to help you out, you can rest assured that they will do it. I'm Tim Borman, the Chief of Staff for the South Dakota Attorney General, basically using this episode of What's New to get on my soapbox because I got bothered by some phone calls today. But thanks for watching. And I really hope you aren't bothered by these near as much as I am. But if you are, know that help is on the way. And we're always here, too, with the Consumer Protection Division to help you out as well. Before you leave, I'd like to ask you to click on the subscribe button to our YouTube channel, SD Attorney General. And also, don't forget to follow us on our other social media platforms at Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Until next time, thanks for watching.